There's no use adjusting your television set because, yes, the two men who are in there and who are about to wrestle are a little bit shorter than the ropes, and the referee does get down on his knees to look him in the eye because here we have two of the country's foremost midget wrestlers. On the left, with the strange-looking contraption around his head, is Lord Littleburg, a veteran of the mat game and often referred to as the king or the world's champion of the midget wrestlers. And his opponent is Cowboy Lang, who comes from Amarillo and who is also a top-rated star among midget wrestlers and he is a tough cookie in the ring. I'll tell you, both of these fellows rank among the athletes whom I have learned to enjoy over the years and enjoy is exactly the word. So it's Lord Littlebrook, and his adversary is Cowboy Lang. As far back, Jim, as I can remember, uh, since the first midget wrestlers I ever saw, and that was uh, back in the 1930s, I have been a fan of midget wrestlers. They're awfully entertaining. I was looking while well, they were, while well, they were, while well, Tommy Gilbert was down on one knee uh, checking them out there, those small, that's one of the smaller pair of cowboy boots uh, I've seen in, in quite some time there, Paul. Well, they're not, not exactly Texas size. No, they're sure not. No. But I'll tell you, you say the, they are entertaining. These are also athletes who sure are, are capable of uh, inflicting a very, very strong uh, moves against even accomplished wrestlers. Certainly are, and you know, I've always been impressed with Cowboy Lang's conditioning. He's got a very well developed back and arm. He works out, he works out hard, and he's a strong. He has to work out because you take these men comparatively. They are of equal weight, equal size, so it hurts just as much when they get a headlock as if I should get a headlock on you. And exactly you right. Equal size. Some fans may remember that at one time, Lord Littlebrook, uh, was challenged by Dan Lovett, who was a uh, sports uh, caster for uh, radio station KTRH 740 on the dial. And Lovett wanted to wrestle him, and I finally got a commitment from Lord Littlebrook that he would not hurt Dan Lovett. And Lovett laughed when he, when he heard that I had uh, actually gotten this commitment because Lovett was not a wrestler and he was not an athlete and he thought that because Littlebrook was a midget he would have absolutely no problem in just uh, holding him down to the mat and beating him. Well, <laughs> he learned <laughs> differently and Wells Twombly who had been a sports writer for the Houston Chronicle and who was the instigator of the challenge was, uh, was the referee in the ring. But I want to tell you that Lord Littlebrook surprised Lovett and turned him upside down, inside out, and as they say, every way but loose. And Lovett went down to the dressing room and became rather ill after it was all over. He found that it was a lot of energy. But Littlebrook was uh, true to his promise. He said he wouldn't hurt him, and he, he didn't. He uh, did, however, teach him a little respect. Needless to say, I would guess there was no return match signed after that situation. No, there hasn't been another one of that kind, and I never heard of another one anywhere else in, in the country. But I give Dan Lovett a lot of credit because he uh, took a chance. He, he stepped into something in which he was inexperienced and um, learned sports firsthand. Littlebrook, I think, uh, has probably forgotten more devious tricks and most athletes I've ever known. He's he's a real veteran that has mastered so many. I've seen him wrestle a, lo a lot of times, and he's he's a he's a tough, arrogant uh, athlete. Oh, there is no question about that. Little Littlebrook uh, comes from London. He was a circus um, 
performer in England, and um, I've seen him on the trampoline at the boys' club when he was putting on some exhibitions for the youngsters out there, and he bounced all over that and, and thought it was the best uh, uh, opportunity he had had to entertain boys and since he had left England. And he's a tough cookie. Right now, he has Cowboy Lang in trouble. If there is any trick he knows, why, he's going to use it. And there are a lot of tricks he knows that no one else employs. On bar for Lord Littlebrook and underneath, and he looks a little bit unhappy as Cowboy Lang. And well, he might look unhappy because he has been on the receiving end while we were praising the past uh, victories of Lord Littlebrook. And he can look you right in the eye if you bend down, and he can deny that he ever did anything. Right. And yes, he can. I tell you, uh, we're going to see next week here on television the confrontation that put Dr. D.S.D. Williams in the hospital. We'll have that here on television next week, and I'm really anxious for everybody to see that, to see exactly how devious the Freebirds are. As Cowboy Lang, now that's, that's some strength. Well, you were mentioning strength. And remember, it takes as much power for him to be able to lift Lord Littlebrook as it does for me to be able to, to lift a 220-pounder in the ring and carry him around. And for any wrestler, for that matter, Lang is a little powerhouse, but Littlebrook is wrestling more with his head now than his, than his body. Experience takes its toll. You learn things, but uh, you pay by getting a little bit older with every match. You know, we've got a lot of great fans, and I've grown to really a have a, a, a great sense of respect for the fans here in Houston. The wrestling fans uh, all across America will be here on August the 8th, and I can't wait to see some of those great fans here in here in Houston on our next big event here on August the 8th. They've selected Houston as a site, and I know you have, there's no promoter in the country that has a higher regard for the fans than you do, and it's, it's great. I'm going to have a lot of fun coming in a day early for that one, because I want to Well, I'll tell you, these fan, this fan association is a very finely uh, tuned unit and they are um, capable of, of uh, keeping their members well informed and, and doing a lot of good things. I, I enjoy these people. They love wrestling and so do I. And right now, uh, Lord Littlebrook isn't sure whether he does or not. <laughs> Between uh, the referee and his opponent, Lord Littlebrook's in a, in a bad way right now. He's, yes. he's not going anywhere unless he gets some help and there, there it comes. We got, we'll have two rings set up, too, on August the 8th. Paul, something that you're familiar with. I am not. I've never been in a building where they had a two-ring match of any kind. I'm really looking forward to it on well, August the 8th. Well, of course, the object in that is to throw every wrestler from ring number one into ring number two. And then when two men get into ring number two, the action starts all over again. And the object then is to throw everybody over the top rope to the concrete floor then they are eliminated. When there is one man remaining in ring number one and one man remaining in ring number two, then they get in the same ring and the battle comes to a $50,000 end. A lot of excitement. You never, never, never have seen more continuous excitement than in the two-ring battle royal. I can't wait to see that one. It'll be my first. I, hope, I know a lot of fans sitting out there watching us now on 39 Gold be some of their first too and I it's gonna be a lot of fun a lot very exciting and so many volatile collisions how do you keep track of all the action two rings at one time it's gonna well, be something it's impossible to uh, actually show it on television because of the uh, facilities being so um, uh, so placed so it will not be seen on television however it will be the final event on the card here on August the 8th Friday night it'll be quite a night so Lord Littlebrook is, ha is having a, a little argument there with somebody. I think it was looking at him through a, a pair of binoculars. That could be considered an affront, I imagine, to, to him, accentuating his uh, lack of size. He's Break a, for his logic. And he's a very arrogant. Yeah, fella, and we're going to see a couple of more arrogant folks a little bit later in the program. Hollywood John Tatum and Jack Victory with Missy Hyatt at ringside going against Missing Link and Coco Ware. 
Dark Journey will be at ringside as well. That's a full Nelson he's applying, by the way. Sure, sure is. And we look forward to seeing that battle. In an uncomfortable situation, you see Littlebrook trying to work his way out of it. He worked it, but he's the back up in trouble. And again, the full Nelson as Cowboy Lang put him in position for it. So Lang and Littlebrook, and Littlebrook resents the uh, implications made by some of the fans in that front row. They're telling him off, and he doesn't exactly like it. Armin Hidlock to take him down, and now the task, of course, is to hold him down, as Littlebrook well knows. And referee Tommy Gilbert looking in there to check on things. Lang now with the hammerlock, and as he gets in behind, he uses what is known as the surfboard hold to pull those arms back and to keep the body rigid in front. Lang, <laughs> Lang's got a surprise for Littlebrook. Ten minutes have gone by. That's what I was referring to. Using your head. <laughs> yes. In the literal sense, perhaps. <laughs> And that time he, of course, fell victim to the strategy of his lordship. Side headlock, and there's a quick exit for a hammerlock by, by Lang. That's a good look at those cowboy boots we were talking about. Yes. Rhode Island size, not Texas size. Well, you know, Lord Littlebrook has, um, has four very, very beautiful children. Uh, two girls, two boys. Two full-size kids and two midget in his family. Uh, and there was a clout across the throat that wasn't exactly a, cl a clothesline, but had exactly the proper effect. It upended Cowboy Lang, put him on his back, and left him there where Lang is looking, or rather Littlebrook was looking around for that uh, grip on the stomach muscles, but never quite made it. Well, Lang is in a good position. He's tempted, and the fans are encouraging him. <laughs> Atomic drop. It, it was well aimed, well placed, and well executed. So as Lang now stands, they're waiting for an opportunity now to sneak in on the Spry one. A little brook on the left, and as they test strength here, Lang has, for a moment, the advantage. But as the kick in the belly turned the tail, why, you know what happened. Lang felt that pressure on the wrist. His hand was bent backward, and he sunk down to his knees. But this puts him just in a very compromising position there well see the referees in more trouble than either of the wrestlers at that time and Littlebrook is trying to accuse Lang uh, uh, let's get there the suspicions of referee Tommy Gilbert are great he, th he thinks Littlebrook had something to do with it and so do the fans those I know when I was officiating uh Pro wrestling matches, I would I'd much prefer to do a full size match anytime <laughs> as the midgets. They're so unpredictable and they get you in some positions that you just don't know, you know, you're just, you're not accustomed to. You know, they get you in situations that you just, you don't see that often. It's right? just hard to react. And it's like wrestling a girls match. You, you can't win. You, you, if you're refereeing, you're in, exactly you're right. in trouble. Head scissor. And those short legs are capable of some great pressure because of the leverage uh, that they offer to the man that's using it and Littlebrook with his head stuck through there and his nose down firmly against that canvas is not really in a, a good way still a head scissor the turnover could get a count but it didn't 
Referee Tom Gilbert saw the other side of uh, Little Brook and decided that the um, he, he decided that the whole the shoulders were up. I I was disturbed there as I was trying to talk about uh, Lang because in the escape from the hold, why Little Brook uh, flailed his arms in all directions. So he's claiming the victory now as Cowboy Lang is on the Coliseum concrete and the um, there is the, his lordship in behind the cowboy with a reverse chin lock and Tom Gilbert checking on everything, looking around to make certain. Reverse chin, and there's a nice escape and you saw as he came out of that, he took that arm right along with him by the very turn of his head and he managed to um, to turn right into the arm and to take him down with a hammerlock. This is more important to Lang that the drop kick and you might say he didn't have very far to go to and Little Brooks in trouble and I, I don't know. It almost looked like a three count that time, but uh, it was close. It Jim, sure I, was. I, I, I think not. It the was close. Was in a, like I said, Fifteen it, minutes have the curious gone position by, there. and they are. I, I'm, I'm wondering what Littlebrook has got to complain about, or should we say that he's going to find something to complain about, no matter what it is? I think that's, I think <laughs> that's his style that's because his style. he figures he can keep the referee in trouble. Uh oh, now look at trouble. it. Yeah. Well, he's going to the showdown here. <laughs> Lord Littlebrook lulls you into that false sense of security with that. Sleepish grin, and then all of a sudden he turns it right back on. And oh, oh and, well, that time he didn't get exactly get turned on. He, sure he did. got turned into. He slammed right in there. And here is Cowboy Lang up and oh, oh, he may have found the weak spot in Lord Littlebrook. And, and that back slam can turn into a victory here for Cowboy Lang. It's the best he's been able to bounce him, but the foot in the face is a good answer. Sure is, and Lord Littlebrook turn it on out of Cowboy Lang, the action is fast. And he's got his shoulders down, and there it is. So it goes. The victory goes. To Cowboy Lang, who won in two ways. He got the law, his lordship's shoulders down and he got his hat back. Not a bad deal for a cowboy. Not a bad day's work. 